Hello and welcome to this STXL Quick Take video, Introduction to the OpenCL Memory Model. The OpenCL Memory Model provides a unified view of memory hierarchy across all systems which are capable of executing OpenCL applications. At the highest level of the model, the memory space is divided into host memory and device memory. In the case of Xilinx-enabled OpenCL platforms, the device is an FPGA. The memory associated with the device is further divided into the following three levels of hierarchy, global memory, local memory, and private memory. This memory hierarchy is common to all OpenCL capable devices. This video provides an introduction to the OpenCL memory model with respect to an FPGA device. Device SD-RAM memory. In the context of OpenCL applications, memories attached to the FPGA device are used to store the contents of buffers mapped by the host application to global memory and constant global memory. Global memory is created from memory components attached to the FPGA, such as SD-RAM. The maximum size of this memory in the context of an OpenCL application is specified in the platform definition. The management of buffers mapped onto this type of memory is handled by the host code application through the use of OpenCL API functions. OpenCL API functions are used to determine the size of a buffer as well as the read-write access to the buffer. Out of all memory types supported by the OpenCL memory model, it is important to keep in mind that global memory is the memory with the largest capacity and longest latency. Its maximum achievable data throughput is dependent on how data is accessed by the kernel code and is the only memory that is visible from both host and the device. Constant global memory is a special case of global memory, which has all the same characteristics as global memory except for the following restrictions. Only the host can read write into this memory, and kernels executing on the device can only read the contents of constant global memory. This specialized case of global memory is typically used to store filter coefficients from the host to the device for kernel computation. Let's take a look at how global memories are specified and used in an OpenCL application. An OpenCL application is composed of the host code and kernel code, which must explicitly state all memory transactions. In the host code, buffers D input and D coefficient are explicitly written from the host memory to the device global memory using the CLNQ write buffer API. In the kernel code, buffers input, coefficient, and output are defined as part of kernel arguments. The declaration of buffer input is annotated with a global qualifier, which informs the compiler that the contents for this buffer will be stored in device global memory. The data for this buffer is provided by buffer D input from the host code. Based on this information, STXL creates a compute unit capable of reading and writing data for buffer input. Buffer coefficient in the kernel code is defined using the constant qualifier instead of global. The contents for this buffer are still stored in device global memory, but the kernel is restricted to read-only access to the buffer. The data for coefficient is provided by buffer D coefficient in the host code. The last buffer declared in the kernel function signature is output. In this example, output is used to store the results of the kernel computation. Since the buffer was declared using the global qualifier, its data will be visible to both the host and the device. In the host code, the contents of kernel buffer output are transferred back to the host memory space by the CLNQ read buffer API. On-chip global memory. In the context of an FPGA, one possible improvement for global memories is to move them from SDRAM onto on-chip memory. On-chip memories are created out of block RAM memory resources 
in the FPGA fabric and can be accessed with a very low latency, even when performing random access. In addition to low latency, on-chip memory benefits from being optimized based on the application, including user-specified parameters, as well as SDL-generated customizations. One key difference between on-chip and off-chip global memories is that on-chip memories are managed inside the device without intervention from the host. Let's take a look at how on-chip memories are defined in OpenCL kernel code. In this example, the kernel.cl file defines three kernels, input stage, adder stage, and output stage. In addition to the kernel definitions, two buffers are declared in the on-chip global memory space, arrays gvar0 and gvar1. They are declared as program scope arrays with 1024 entries. It is important to keep in mind that program scope buffers in SDXL must have a minimum of 1024 entries. Since gvar0 and 1 are declared on-chip global memories, these arrays are not part of the kernel and can therefore not be seen by the host. As shown by the example, array gvar0 collects the output of kernel 1 and provides these values as inputs to kernel 2. At the same time, array gvar1 collects the output of kernel 2 and provides it as an input to kernel 3. The SDXL implementation of kernels communicating through on-chip global memory is shown. In this implementation, the compute units for kernels 1, 2, and 3 are connected to a memory bus that provides access to off-chip global memory. In addition to the kernels, the FPGA contains an on-chip global memory composed of two buffers, gvar0 and 1. During compilation, SDXL analyzes the usage of the gvar0 and 1 and automatically generates the best implementation as an application-specific memory subsystem containing dedicated kernel-to-memory data paths. In the OpenCL memory model, the lowest level of the memory hierarchy is composed of local and private memory banks. These memory banks are physically located inside the compute unit. For FPGA-based compute units, SDXL generates custom local and private memory elements that are optimized for the kernel computation. Local memory is defined as the memory space in the compute unit that is shared by all work items in a work group. The size of this memory is stated as part of the kernel code and fixed at compile time. There is only one physical instance of each memory marked as local in the memory code when the compute unit is generated by SDXL. Private memory is the memory allocated to a single work item. SDXL generates independent physical memory banks to store private memory buffers for each work item. The number of physical memory banks instantiated by the compiler is determined by compile time by the number of work items in a work group. Let's see how local and private memories are defined in kernel code. Local memories such as array1 are defined by adding the local qualifier to the variable declaration. During kernel compilation, SDXL generates one physical copy of array 1 using memory elements inside the FPGA fabric. This physical memory is accessible by all work items in the compute unit. Private memories, such as array 2, are defined by adding the private qualifier to the variable declaration. During kernel compilation, STXL generates one physical instance of array 2 per work item in the work group. For this example, the required work group size attribute has been set to 16. Therefore, STXL will generate 16 unique physical memories to store in the contents of array 2, one for each work item. In addition to local and private memories, kernel code can define regular variables. Regular variables are stored inside registers 
in the compute unit. STXL automatically instantiates as many physical registers per variable as needed to maximize compute unit throughput. In summary, this video presented an introduction to the OpenCL memory model and how it applies to FPGA-based systems. This introduction covered the difference between host and device memories, off-chip global and constant memories, on-chip global memories, local memories, and private memories. For more information, visit xilinx.com slash sdxl or contact your local Xilinx representative. Thank you for watching.